let's imagine the two scenarios that I have listed here for a gas uh, in some type of container and then some type of process occurring which uh, can go one of these two directions here. So in the first scenario here we have a gas which is uh, half on the left of the container here and then there's a partition and then there's vacuum on the other side and over here the partition is moved up and it's just gas everywhere. So we know that if we take this partition here and we remove it then the gas will expand to fill out the whole container. We know that intuitively about the behavior of gases that they will expand to fill whatever container they're in. But what if I take a partition at a random time and put it down the middle here? Well I won't get this situation again. The gas won't be half, half all over here and then completely empty over here. It's very very unlikely that that will occur. So we generally think of this process as being directional. So it has a directionality to it, that is it can go one way or not the other. And another word for this would be that it is irreversible. So without the input of energy to clear out half of this uh, container here with, with just vacuum, then the gas is going to remain uh, filling up the entire space of the container here. And similarly here, we have uh, helium gas on the left side here. Let's draw a bunch of helium particles in there. There they are, just bouncing around, having a good old time in the container. And then on the right side, we have neon only. And there's a bunch of neon atoms, particles moving around back and forth. And then if we have the partition removed, we know that these two are going to mix. So the helium is going to expand and take up the whole container and its particles will be spread throughout the entire container. As will the neon atoms, they'll be spread around the entire container without reference to left or right. And if I put the partition back, I won't get the gases to re-separate into two separate halves. I, if I put the partition back now, I'll get two halves, each with uh, a mixture of helium and neon. So this, pre this process as well is both directional and irre and irreversible. It goes this way and it doesn't go backward. It would take quite a lot of energy input to be able to separate the helium and the neon once they have uh, <clears throat> mixed together like this. So this type of uh, process that I have listed up top here, I would call that the expansion of a gas into vacuum. And the type of process I have down here where we have two gases that are separate and then they mix together, I would just call that a gas mixing. So during each of these processes, we think of them as being reversible. But if we look at the system, there's been no work done and there's been no heat added, at least that we've said. So since there's been no heat added or no work done, so work and heat equals zero and the change in internal energy equals work plus heat so the change in internal energy is going to be is going to be zero so our question is if internal energy doesn't change then why is this process irreversible what is it about these two final states over here that make them different from the initial states on the right. I'll fill in the same thing for the whatever gas particles I have here and start them off on the right there, just filling up the left side. So what is it about it? Well, what we can look kind of qualitatively is see that there's more disorder on the final states here than there are in the initial states. So here the gas is more ordered. It's located on the left side whereas there's more uncertainty about where it's located on this in this final state here the gas can be spread throughout the container so you have less information about where the gas is it's more disordered you 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 know less about where the gas particles are whereas here uh, you go from a state where it's ordered being only helium on the left only neon on the right very sorted very orderly on the right then they mix together and you don't know if you pick a random particle on the left side whether it's helium or neon whereas if you pick a random particle over here you know it's helium 
So the characteristic that we're looking for is that in all of these cases we have increasing disorder. So when there's no energy change and there's, there's no clues with respect to energy which direction an irreversible process should go, we're going to look for the direction which increases disorder. So we're going to look now for a metric which is going to be a qual is going to be a quantitative measure of what disorder is for systems like these.